how I learned it in elementary school, uh, it was a quick check for arithmetic. It was called casting out nines. Hmm. You call it something else, too, a discrete number, I think you call it. <laughs> yeah, right? it, it is a discrete number, one through nine. One through nine. Because that's the decimal system. The decimal system has only nine conditions in it because the modular nine, the base ten system is modular nine because the number of any base is always one number less than the base because zero is not a number. It's a whole or a, an absence. An absence of anything. And a zero means nothing, basically. Correct. Whereas the unique thing is that nine times anything or nine never changes. It's always itself. It's complete, total, whole. Any multiple of nine is always nine. Nine, eighteen, reduced. 1 plus 8 equals 9, 27, 2 plus 7 is 9, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81. 9 is never changing. Let's clarify it again for people with that. 9 times any multiple of the number 9 will reduce down to 9 again. So That's nine why it's the zenith at the top of the circle. It's the axis. 9 represents the axis. And the axis is the secret of, as Jimi Hendrix says, everything. Huh, yeah, Hendrix had, you know, he wrote that amazing song, If Six Were Nine. Right. And he knew something was going Access on. Access bold as well. <laughs> Amazing. All right, so all right, so let's continue. So we have 16. Now 16 doubled is 32. Mm-hmm. If we reduce that, we take 3 plus 2, that equals 5. So now we go f- uh, from down to the 5 position. Now the next thing we do... So you 30- drew a number from the 7, a straight line from the 7 to the 5. Right. So so far we've gone, we've gone from the 1 to the 2 to the 4 to the 8, to the 7, and to the 5. Correct. And now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take 64, and 60, or I'm sorry, we're going to take 32, and 32 doubled is 64, and 64 reduces down to 6 plus 4, which is 10. 10, again, reduces down to 1 plus 0, which takes us back to the 1. So that's our initial spot, right? So the sequence goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, and then back to one, and the and the notion is that this repeats forever. Correct. It it turns out that sixty four is one complete cycle of infinity. In other words, it isn't because eight times eight is sixty four. It isn't because the Maya, everything ends at sixty four with the Mayan calendar in two thousand and twelve. Mm. It's because sixty four is the first. It's like passing go on Monopoly. You, it's, it is a bounded infinity. It's not infinity of direction. They think the binary code is a geometric progression. Mm-hmm. Forgive me, but they call it a combinatorial explosion because they, they don't even have computers that can do a septrillion today um, and calculate it um, like two to like the 40th as, as far as being able to. They, can, they, they do it as a linear progression. Okay. I shouldn't say they don't, but how they do it is, is that they're unable... To, um, it becomes an unwieldy large number. Whereas what I discovered is is that the decimal system, like the universe, is a closed torus. It's a donut. Mm. And I discovered that. So when you go 64 doubled, what does it become? 128. Which equals what? 1 plus 2 plus 8, which equals 11. Correct. Which equals 1 plus 1, which equals 2. So you just went from 1 to 2 again. You repeated you the go. cycle. Okay, and so then what's 128 doubled? Right. Now we have 256. 2 plus 5 is 7. Plus 6, six is 13. Uh, 1 plus 3 is 4. So we're back, right back on track. 2 to 4. So what comes after 4? Or 256 doubled? Uh, what's that? 512. So that's 8. Then we have uh, 1024, which is 7, et cetera, et cetera. And it just goes on 1048 and on. 1048 is 14 to 5. Right. It never bri- so it turns out that the binary code follows a path. Mm. This path is called, there is a scientific term for it. It's called the longest mean free pathway of least resistance. I'll say it again. The longest mean free pathway of least resistance. Okay. They look for that in producing energy. And that's the geometry that when I make my coils is why I get so much energy. Because I found the way things move, anything moves, doesn't matter what you use. It can be any continuous medium. It can be electricity. It can be water. It can be uh, the atmosphere. We have. I'll give you an example. You see the, the vortex action everywhere. And you, right there, you're looking at the binary code making a vortex. But I'll give you examples. A uh, universe spirals, galaxies spiral in diskettes with the spiral arms of galaxies. Hmm. You have in the atmosphere, you have tornadoes. Look sure. at the um, Katrina with its huge, gigantic spiral arms. Uh, hey, um, and that's Marco, made out of atmosphere. Marco, let me ask you a question. You know, we're, we're 
we haven't talked too much about the torus. Uh, that, that's what that's what becomes implied from the, from this mathematics. But um, mm-hmm. the, the root of that we have. You mentioned the body earlier, and I think we need to go back there because that's where we sort of all begin. And we have this thing we call the torso. And, and in fact, if you if, if you even mix up the letters a little bit, you can get torus out of torso almost. But um, I, I hate to say it, but you you pulled my favorite comment. That's what I would have said. That's wow. right. The human torso is based on the root word toroid hmm. or torus, T R U S. And tornado, obviously, too. There you go. Or electrical torsion. So mm, what I have discovered is that that, I have yeah. found the mathematical pathway for all of that terms or tor- toroidal. It's called toroidal pinch. Now, the audience, nobody, unless you work in fusion, is going to know what I'm talking about when I say toroidal pinch. It's spelled T-O-R-O-I-D-A-L, pinch, P-I-N-C-H. I know how to make the perfect nozzle, the perfect toroidal aperture, or primal point of unity. That's my favorite term. Hmm. What do you mean? Try, try, try to put that into language that we can understand, primal point of unity. Is, Essentially, is it it's the ID. Source? It's the inner diameter of the torus. It's like a camera shutter. It's like an eye. And this is the source of energy. It is, there is an emanation that comes from the inner diameter of the toroid that causes the, everything to move in the toroid to warp and process and curve to move back into the torus. Hmm. In other words, a black hole is being driven. It, isn't, it is an incredible mechanical apparatus. And you, using these toroidal coils, there's pictures of, of my coil in my PDF on my um, website yeah, yeah. under the rodents.